So well, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about gradient vector fields, or at least introducing those, this concept. And in the last video, we talked about uh, a vector fields kind of in general, about how to graph them a little bit. But if you think back to earlier in the course, one of the places that we've actually encountered vector fields before was with the gradient uh, of a function of two or three variables. And a gradient is... Uh, a function itself which takes uh, input as a function of two variables and output is a uh, gradient function and that gradient function is uh, a vector a vector field right so ultimately you have some X and Y coordinates and you end up with a vector which is the gradient of the original function at a particular point okay so the gradient of a function of two real variables is actually a 2D vector field. The function uh, that it's based on, the function f of xy, uh, is called the potential function for that gradient field, which is, which is uh, denoted, the gradient field is denoted as grad of that function or, or this, this del f, so the gradient of, of uh, f. So uh, the vectors in the gradient vector field uh, if you remember, are always perpendicular to the contours of the graph of F. Remember, the graph of F is going to be some surface in 3D, but its contour graph is a set of curves in 2D, and the, the, the uh, gradients are vectors which are perpendicular to those um, contours. You might, might also remember they're the, they're the uh, direction of greatest rate of growth on that, and the direction of the largest... Um, derivative, okay, and directional derivative, and uh, for reasons we'll explain later, gradient fields are called conservative fields, so that's another name for a gradient field. I'll explain what that term uh, means in a later video. So here's an example. The gradient function of a uh, function of two real variables, again, is a 2D vector field. And so here we started with the potential function f of xy equals a x squared plus y squared plus b for a and b given by some sliders here. And in this particular case, um, a is setting at 0.35, b is setting at 0.7. And we get this graph here, which is a, a, a circular paraboloid. And if we were to slice this with planes that are parallel to the xy plane, we're going to get circles. And we project all those circles back down on the xy plane. You can see that happening right here. You get some contours. Here I have contours for, for z equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Notice the contours get closer together as we go further out, meaning that this thing is growing faster and faster in height as we go out, and a little slower growing right here near, near the origin. Now, the gradient of that is just the derivative. So if we distribute this, we get 2a squared plus a, two, we get, sorry, we get a x squared plus a y squared plus b. Take the derivative with respect to x, uh, the, the b and the a y squared are treated like constants, so that goes to zero. a is a constant, x is a variable. So that's the power function that gives us 2a x. Similarly, we get 2a y for the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And that gives us our gradient function. Now we can graph that as a uh, vector field, right? Graph the vectors for particular uh, values of x and y. Remember, a is a specific concept, and right at the moment it's 0.35. And we get vectors. You can see those vectors down here in the xy plane. Uh, you can see below this, and you can see them here. If we were to move these things up, we would move the contour up to the graph. It would be a slice in the plane, say, z equals, well, if it's this one right here, for example, it's z equals 2. So right there, z equals 2. Move that up. If we move the vectors that are pointing, that are starting on that curve up as well, they would be pointing straight out perpendicular to that contour curve. But anyway, we plot all those in the xy plane. And you can see them here, and that is a gradient vector field. Okay, so there's a couple of different things that we might do. We might 
uh, start with the gradient field. Well, we have to start with the potential function and then find the gradient field. And then maybe we could graph it or make tables or whatever. And then we might go the other direction. If we start with the gradient field, the gradient for a gradient vector field, um, start with that function, the, the, the vector field itself, then can we find the original uh, potential function that it was based on? So basically, one's an antiderivative of a sort, and one is a derivative of sorts. So let's do a problem like that, one of each type. So here's a problem for you. Uh, here's a function f of xy uh, equals 0.4 x cubed y minus 0.3 x. Find the uh, potential function. Uh, that is the potential function. Find the gradient function of that, and then make, make a graph of it. And you should easily be able to do the potential function by hand, and then graphing it might be more useful to find some software somewhere to help with that. So see if you can at least get the potential function worked out before you go on to the next slide. And if not, uh, even better, see if you can actually graph it. Press pause. Come back when you're ready. Okay. So the gradient of this function is a 2D vector. Uh, field and it's a function so that the first component is the derivative with respect to x the partial derivative with respect to x of the original potential function and then comma and the y component is the original function potential functions first derivative partial derivative with respect to y so we would just take the derivative with respect to x okay so the y's and the country is a constant just like the 0.4 so we've still got 0.4 and y and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared so the 3 ends up multiplying by the 0.4 to give me 1.2 then I've got x squared and a y and of course the derivative here is just negative uh, 0.3 so the x component is 1.2 x squared y minus 0.3 then you got comma and what's the derivative with respect to y well the, the, the last term there is going to be just 0 so that doesn't affect us here we just have a coefficient times y, and so the derivative there with respect to y is that coefficient, 0.4x cubed. So that was easy enough to do by hand. And then I put it back in the same software uh, that I used for the previous one, and this, uh, this GeoGebra thing here, changed the formula here, and had it graph, uh, this time the a and the b aren't affecting anything. And I may have moved these uh, increments and scale factors there a little bit. But there are some vectors. If we were to graph the contours, they would be, uh, well, they'd be hyperbolas. You'd see some uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the x and y axes. You'll get it here and here uh, for positive x's and negative x's, negative positive z's, and negative z's would be over here and here. And these, they would be perpendicular. The curves would be perpendicular to these vectors. So these vectors are perpendicular to those contours. And you can see uh, there's the, the 3D shape over there. All right. That's a little more work to go backwards. But let's do one the other direction. Now this time, suppose we're given a vector field. And let's show that it actually is a gradient vector field by finding a potential function. Now, before we say this, before we go further, let's, not every function is a gradient vector field. Not every function is, is what we call a conservative or a gradient vector field. Um, but if it is, it has a potential function for which is, it is the gradient of. So you need to, let's see if we can find that. And basically, we're going to be doing some antiderivatives. So basically, here's what you'd end up doing. We know that this first component, 3 sine y minus 4y cosine y plus 2 has to be the derivative with respect to x of the original function. So the potential function has to be an antiderivative of that with respect to x, treating y as a constant, like a partial antiderivative. Okay, so just, just a regular old derivative there, but treating y as a constant, doing an antiderivative. Okay, now 3 sine y Actually, all three, all of this, there's no x's. So actually, it just each term, either the whole thing picks up an x at the end, or I'm going to go ahead and write it as each term. 
Each term basically picks up an x. So you have 3x times sine of y minus 4x times cosine of y plus 2x. And then you have your plus a constant. But here's where you have to be a little careful. This constant might not actually be a, just a constant function. It might be. But it could also have some, some function of y. Because if we were to add any function of y here and then take the derivative, the derivative of this function of y is going to be 0. If it doesn't have any x's in it, remember the derivative with respect to x is 0. So your constant, sort of, your plus c is like a function. It's a function of y. I call it f1 of y. Okay. Similarly, we take the second component, and it has to be the derivative of the, the f, right, with respect to y. So if we take an antiderivative with respect to y, we should get the function here. So let's see, derivative of sine y is cosine y. So the antiderivative of cosine y is sine y. The 3x is like a constant, so it's 3x sine y for the antiderivative there. And the antiderivative of sine y is minus cosine y. So if we have this here, we, we get minus 4x cosine of y. And the antiderivative of negative 3 is just negative 3y. Plus our constant this time is not really just a constant, but actually a function of x only, no y's. Now, if this is going to work, these things have to be equal to each other. And they can only way you can adjust is by adjusting a, a function of y here and a function of x here. And if you look, it works out nicely because they both have the 3x sine y, so that's got to show up. They both have the minus 4x cosine y. This one has a 2x. That's okay because that's part of the f of x, f2 of x over here. This one has a minus 3y. We need that, but that's part of the f1 of y over here. And then we could have a, a real constant here um, because when we take derivatives with respect to x or y, that part's going to go away. And so there is our, our family of potential functions. Now, we would could get a specific potential function if we knew a particular ordered pair. Like, for example, if we knew it went through, you know, the origin, for example. We could plug in x and y or 0 here and then solve for c. Or if we knew it went through the point 1, 5, we could plug in 1 for x. Um, well, I'm sorry. We, we, we have to know when x is 1 and y is 2 if we knew f or z is 5. We could plug in 1 and 2 for x, 5 here, and solve for c. So we could solve for a specific c if we know one specific point on the surface. But if we don't, we get a family of, of, uh, of antiderivatives here, which are called the potential function. Now let's just double check by going backwards. If we take the derivative of this with respect to x, this gives us 3 sine y minus 4 cosine y plus 2, and that's plus 0. So that's the first part. And if we take the derivative with respect to y, partial derivative there, we get 3x cosine y plus 4x sine of y plus 0 minus 3 plus 0. So that works out correctly. So everything works out just fine. And again, uh, not every function will this work because sometimes if what, what had to happen here is basically anything that any term that had both x and y in it here and he had had to be over here as well. They had to match. The only thing that you could have in this one that's not over there, the first one that's not in the second, is something that has x's but not y's. And the only thing you could have in the second one that's not in the first one is y's but not x's. Okay? And if that's the case, then we can basically take all the terms that appear, show, have them show up once here, put our plus C, we're good to go. Okay, but if, um, for example, if this had a 2xy term and this one didn't have that, then it's a no-go because that tells you this is not a gradient vector field. There is no possible potential function. But everything, of course, worked out just fine on this one, and it often does.